time for textual healing. My girlfriend ever puts lids on anything. <laughs> my dad, he basically sort of lifts women. I've got a moustache. I'm loath to shave it off. Are you in a relationship? With my moustache, or with... <laughs> <laughs> Textual. Textual. Okay, groupies, it's time for Ellis and I to solve the problem of a listener in our regular feature, Textual Healing, and on line five, we have Bill from, uh, I, well, I don't know, where, where are you calling from, Bill? Uh, dark, dark, darkness. <laughs> Stop <laughs> Okay, and uh, what's what's your problem, Deptford, mate? Deptford, sorry, Deptford. 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 Sorry, that's fine, Bill. Um, what's your problem for us, Bill? Well, I've got th- I've, I've got three actually. Look, right. Um, so you can pick A, B, or C. So do you want to do you want to solve either A, hole in ceiling, right. B, surface of meat, <laughs> or C, chipped reindeer skull? <laughs> Could we what go? What are you best equipped for? I think probably B, surfeit of meat. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not very good at DIY. And was it a chipped reindeer skull? It doesn't matter now, does it? Yeah. <laughs> it <doesn't matter> <laughs> okay. Uh, so can we have surfeit of meat, please? Let's not sort of get hung up on the um, on the reindeer skull. So, 450 grams of rump steak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Yeah, it would be all right. <laughs> if that was all the meat I had, I think I'd be absolutely laughing. Here we go, then. 450 grams of rack of lamb. <laughs> Bam. Have you got the meat with you? What do you think this is? Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> is that the it feels rack... like it's meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what else have we got? Uh, Hang on, let me write well, this down. Are you going to guess the meat? Are you going to guess the meat by the sound? Yeah, okay, go on. <laughs> yeah, that's but a new feature. Done... Rump steak. There's your steak. Yeah, rump steak. Very good. Rack. Oh, is that sausages? Morgan sausage. Nature sausages. Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> the original is still the best sausage. <laughs> right, okay. Nature sausages. Oh, hang on a minute. What's this I've found? I'll put you out of your misery. Thighs. Thighs? Yours or... Thighs. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know... yeah. I thought I'd, ha- I'd take a break from slapping the meat down just to give my thighs a slap. <laughs> so basically, it's a funny feature. So basically, how have you come to have so much meat? That's a complete irrelevance. It's a problem I've got, and now I want you to solve it. I've got a lot of meat. A couple of initial thoughts here. Food banks, yeah. Bill. Some people yeah. could make that meat last a, a month. Yeah. Or a lifetime. Or... G- give a man some meat and he can feed his family for a week. Give him the means to slaughter animals and he will feed himself forever. Uh, well, I'm not a religious man, but that sounds familiar. Thank you. You, c- you could also have um, quite a sort of grown-up menu at a children's party. Yes. <laughs> party bags, <laughs> obviously, is an option. It doesn't feel like finger food. I bet there's a BuzzFeed article which is... Ten things to do with meat that will blow your mind. Yeah. And it's like you can make ornaments out of it, or you can use it to decorate or Throw something. Throw it out of a moving car. Yeah, you can what? refine it down to its constituent nutrients. To be fair, I think you have me at ornaments. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, well, you can maybe replace your chipped reindeer skull uh, with a rack of lamb. Do dry it, it will decompose. Thanks very much for calling in. I hope that's Mm. solved your problem. Best of luck, Bill. Thank you. Folks, right now, it's time for... My girlfriend ever puts lids on anything. (laughs) (laughs) My dad, he basically sort of lifts women. I've got a moustache. I'm loath to shave it off. Are you in a relationship? With my moustache, or with... (laughs) (laughs) Right then, team, it's a very special textual healing this week. It's our first ever return caller, because I don't know if you remember last week or from the podcast, we were provided with three potential problems by our caller, Bill, and so many of you have contacted us to say, can you get him back on to solve one of the other two? So we welcome back to line four, Bill from Dart Deptford, wasn't it, Bill? Lewis. <laughs> Lewis in Sussex. Right, sorry. We we thought you were from we Deptford, you were from Deptford or mate. Dartford or Dartmouth. Or Dart. I know, I know. That, I, I had that confusion, but I think it's Lewis. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what we need to know, Bill, is are the two problems uh, that we didn't solve last week, are they still problems for you? Okay, <laughs> so the three problems I've got to be textually healed this time are yeah. hole in roof. Yeah. Which we, we already had. Damaged reindeer skull. Right. Camouflage 
printer. <laughs> What do you want? Are you chase, well, Ellis? people were interested in sort of the damaged slash chipped reindeer skulls. Let's well, let's do that. Are, Although, I mean, my only tactic here was just to sort of introduce camouflage printer in the hope that that maybe gets a bit of heat for next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotta be honest, it is intriguing. Well, let's <laughs> let's go for uh, let's go for damaged slash chipped reindeer skull. Right. Okay. So, what do you want to know about it? Why have you got one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I came across a, um, a, a a reindeer skull in um, April 2013. Then we got it cleaned up. And I don't know if you've ever had a reindeer skull properly cleaned up in Salisbury, but it was <laughs> in the end. I I mean, I had one dusted in Wells, but <laughs> no, never not properly. The same thing at all. <laughs> I mean, this beast actually just slung it in a barrel of acid and. The meat just fell off. Like when you put, like when you dip a two p coin in a glass of coke. Yes, or like when you cook lamb. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got this sort of skull now, and we've got it mounted. And then I took stupidly, I took it out last weekend, <laughs> and it <laughs> it got it got damaged. Do you want to talk us through the damage? Well, I mean, half its jaws fallen off. Right. <laughs> really. <laughs> Can you still tell it's a reindeer? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't suddenly look like a hippo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd see if you can um, see if you can find the other part of its jaw, and then su oh, well, well super glue it on. That is sort of a given. I think I'm looking for something beyond that. Yeah. In case I don't find this piece. Because if you get a different if you get a different reindeer, it might not match up. Yeah. You wouldn't want a sort okay, of reindeer with I'm an also overbite. weirdly ruling out different reindeer. Well, what I would say, Bill. Is why don't you take Billy? A, Billy, is why don't <laughs> yep. you take a plaster cast of the skull and then when it comes out of the cast, fill in the extra bit with sort of more plaster of Paris and then you can I... distress it or decorate it to your own want. Mm, I think why don't I do that? I think it's really a, a matter of time. <laughs> 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 well, what else you get? We'll put it into a 3D printer then. Don't even talk to me about printers. Right. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, thanks for calling in again, Bill. Maybe we'll speak to you next week, and good luck with the skull reconstruction. Uh, well, thank you. You know where I am, and I'll... I'll well, we, we, it's quite vague about where you are, actually, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You've given us a lot of options, but, you know, we're not the only ones who are short I'm in time. Leon, Great. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for calling. Cheers, mate. Ladies and Gs, it's time for... My girlfriend ever puts lids on anything. <laughs> uh, my dad, he basically sort of lifts women. <laughs> I've got a moustache. I'm loath to shave it off. Are you in a relationship? With my moustache. Or with... <laughs> Textual. Textual. Folks, it's time for the third instalment of uh, Textual Healing's ongoing saga with Bill. He's on the line with a third problem for us to solve. Bill, where are you calling from this week? <laughs> Same as always. Where, where's that? <laughs> down south. Down okay, south. Down south. And uh, what... So let's just recap. We've solved your problem on um, surfeit of meat. Last well, do you know what? I think it's more of a case of let's just recap. You haven't solved any of my problems. Whoa! <laughs> we solved... We gave you a very good uh, solution to surfeit of meat. Uh, we've solved your problem of chipped reindeer skull. Uh, yeah, so, not solved. So, so what's <laughs> left on the list? We've got hole in root. Yeah. So well, that's been there a while now. <laughs> Uh, obviously, that's my main problem, so <laughs> disappointed not to get that sort. <laughs> then I've got uh, camouflage printer yeah. and small tap shoes. Small tap shoes. Tap shoes. <laughs> small, small tap shoes. Um, I think because we gave it such a, a drum roll last week, we're going to go for camouflage printer. Yes, please. Absolutely fine. I'll, I'll do my best with these tap shoes. Okay, mate. What, what have you got? The camouflage printer? What do yeah. you want to know? Well, what's the problem? <laughs> Well, what do you think the problem is? I want to camouflage my printer, but I don't know how. <laughs> what do you need it to, to camouflage with? Okay, I've I've bought a wireless printer. Nice. I've put it in my Burning. my sort of de facto study, and then the wireless isn't isn't powerful enough, so I've had to move it closer to the router. Right. Okay. Now the router 
well, you've guessed it, is in the lounge. Yeah. yeah. But do I want a printer in the lounge? Of course you mm, do. Not overly. Do you, uh, just uh, <laughs> if, uh, as, a, as an addendum, do you have a waste paper bin in the lounge? <laughs> <laughs> yes. E uh, excellent, carry on. S sorry, that's a reference to a show from about a year ago. <laughs> and I oh, wrong, is it? <laughs> never mind. Of course, carry I've on. got a waste paper bin in the lounge. Carry on, Billy. Bill, Bill is. And it, at the moment, I've sort of edged it as far into the corner as it'll go. And so you need to make it look more fitting in the lounge. <laughs> Have you thought about maybe gluing ornaments to your printer to make a feature out of it? Perhaps a chipped uh, reindeer skull. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to me as if I haven't already glued ornaments to it. <laughs> it's absolutely covered in carriage clocks. Um, what, yeah. what colour are your walls? Cappuccino. <laughs> okay. Could you could you paint the printer cappuccino? Um, well, I mean, I suppose there's, I don't want to be sort of route one about it, but I guess I could just pour a lot of cappuccino onto it. I, was gonna say, I, if you I leave... wouldn't advise that. It will interrupt the mechanism. But if you leave cups of cappuccino on your print and don't spill them, it'll look like your house is cappuccino themed. Oh, that is very good. But you dust the printer with chocolate <laughs> dust. <laughs> now you're talking. But can a, can a civilian get one of those tins of, of chocolate dust with the with the holes in the top? I guess you can. Oh, no, the you would have to pose as a barista. I don't know whether I want to spend six months working in Cafe Nero's to camouflage my printer. Well, uh, Bill, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, but I do think we've given you a number of good solutions there. Probably more of a reflection on how good your solutions are usually, but I think these are your best solutions you've given me on anything. Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, do yes, send well, us... it is thanks, mate, but in other news, <laughs> that the, the solution is to dust my computer with chocolate <laughs> dust. Yeah, send us a photo of the printer in situ and uh, we can share it with the listeners. No, no, I never send you photos. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Bill. There you go, team. Uh, textual healing with uh, the lovely Bill. It's time for textual healing. I told her that I was in Bendy like Beck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, a doll's house in my bedroom. <laughs> I think I've just drank some wood. <laughs> right? Radio X. When I get that feeling, I want textual healing. Textual. Every week, John and I, we try our best to solve the problems of a listener, and we have a listener on line five. Listener, are you there? Here. Right. I'm here. I'm um, here. And, and who am I speaking to this morning? You are speaking to Bill. Is that Ellis? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, Hello, nice Ellis. Nice to hear from you, Bill. Obviously, uh, yeah. you know, sort of you're a long-time friend. Bill, sorry, Bill. Sorry, Bill Walker. Bill Walker. <laughs> Bill. Oh, it's old Bill. Yeah. It's the old Bill. Uh, long time friend of oh, the, the show. The old Bill. Okay. Oh, less of the old. Is that John as well, I can hear? Yes, it is, Bill. Well. Hello, John. How life's, how's life been treating you since last we spoke? How life's been treating me? Very well, actually. Yeah. I haven't had need to call your show for, <laughs> must be about, uh, ten months now. Yes, But something's months. cropped up, and so here I am. Fire right, away, away, mate. Fire, fire away. away. Well, I've got a couple of problems, so which do you want to choose? It's a straight choice this time, cat flap or widescreen? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go for widescreen. Yes. Um, I think I can sort widescreen myself, so we'll go cat flap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great stuff. I, 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 One down. Deep in my heart, I know. I've just got to buy. A, I've got to buy a thinner screen. I know that. <laughs> right. I didn't right. That's fine. It doesn't need. It doesn't need DJs to sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> Can okay. we talk about this cat flap? Yeah, hit us with cat flap. <laughs> so I've bought. Well, I mean, it's fairly. It's a story as old as time. I've bought a cat flap, um, buoyed by one of the girls in the office saying. Cat, cat. She kept on saying I should get a cat. <laughs> Anyhow, I've bought. I've made the first step. I've bought the cat flap. So I suppose the question is, what now? In the sense <laughs> of, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I know. If I have, if I ever have any hope of getting a cat, I know I need the cat flap. But I'm now. I've got the cat flap. It's in my flat. And I mean, I can't. I can't emphasise enough. What now? Uh, so where is the cat flap installed? No, this is the problem. This is the... Right. I don't know quite where to install a cat flap. It feels like... <laughs> I, can't, I can't put the cat flap on my, on my door because that doesn't really get me anywhere because that goes out into the corridor. 
<laughs> where I wanted to put the cat flap was somewhere where it could be, where it could go and sort of overlook the balcony, and then I could maybe the cat could climb up the balcony. But that's a kind of glass patio door, and I just sort of, much as I sort of sit there with the cat flap and the pane of glass, I don't think I'm capable of cutting glass and then installing a cat flap. So just to so I don't know whether I can do that. I don't want to put the cat flap just in the in the flat just against something because I don't see where that really gets me. <laughs> so are you on the are you on the ground floor? <laughs> on the ground floor? No, the carpet shop's on the ground floor. I'm on the first floor. <laughs> right. Um, well, Bill, I, I think <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill Walker. I'm Bill Walker. I'm, <laughs> I'm concerned that the cat flap may be extraneous to requirements because a, a cat. Well, the problem is, I, I, I've got. Can I just explain one more thing? I'm so sorry, John. Yeah. There's the pane of glass. If I could just take the pane of glass out wholesale, and then put the cat flap there, then that would solve things because I think I could install a cat flap because then I'd have this wooden outline that I could put the cat flap in. But or even make a cat flap. But my only problem with that is then I think that the, I'd need such a big cat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it would it would essentially just be a sort of a massive cat window. And I think I don't know whether I'm going to sort everything in my life out over the years. But what I do know for certain is I don't want a massive cat window. Well, I <laughs> I have seen Bill in Bristol. Uh, if you want to visit, ah, here it's we on, go. Uh, it's on. Uh, it's in St Andrews. A cat flap in a first floor window that leads onto oh. a, a a plant pot, sort of those one, long rectangular yes, ones. Yes, yes. And the cat yes, jumps off yes, the wall yes. onto the windowsill, yes. onto the yes, yes. flower bed, which you could also double as a yes, litter tray. It does. Sort of a horrible yes, litter tray. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, it, and it sort of it sort of forms a kind of. Like Na an assault natural course. Natural ladder. Yeah, a yeah, natural ladder. Like, like a uh, natural ladder. That squirrel that had an assault course in the garden in the 80s that was on what's, uh, That's Life. Yes. Um, yeah. Also, crucial to, life. crucial to point out, Bill Walker, that when the cat is a kitten, obviously you want to uh, restrict its access outside. I so once you've installed now, the when cat will it flap, a... you will have to block Sorry. it. Oh, hang on. Can you repeat repeat that again, please? When a cat's a kitten, funny, it, it will need to be house-trained and not have access outside, so you will need to install the cat flap and then block it. Or lock it. Or, 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 or put a sign up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just, yeah. just a sign saying... <laughs> Don't use this until six to eight weeks. <coughs> and if the cat doesn't I'll make use a sign it, you saying, keep it. I'll just put a sign saying cat window, just so it's just to sort of kid it into thinking it's just a cat window. Yes, <laughs> and then remove the sign when you're comfortable for it to play out. These sorts of mind games are essential if you're going to become a successful cat owner. Absolutely. Oh, look, I know if I'm getting a cat, mind games are going to be high priority. Yes. It's a battle of wits over the next five years for me. Five? You're not very optimistic for the cats. <laughs> oh, I know myself too well. <laughs> well I've been doing ever so well to get to five years. Thanks for calling, Bill W. Um, Have you given me the advice? I can't quite work out what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put the cat flap in the window... You'll have to oh, yeah, you'll have right. to cut it like uh, a sort of a French cat burglar would with a suction cup oh. and a, a diamond crusted uh, glass yes, cutter. Yes, yes. Cut my cloth accordingly. Yes, absolutely. Do let us know how things work out with the cat. Maybe send us a photo of the cat sign. Will do. Subsidiary question, if I may. V quick. <laughs> Rescue cat or proper cat? Uh, always rescue a cat if it's in trouble. Uh, <laughs> but, I, yeah, I would go rescue cat, actually. Go down to those lovely people uh, it, at... Um, Battersea Dogs. Battersea Home. Cats and Dogs. Home. It might have problems with trust. Uh, profound and problems mange. with trust and mange. But then don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so, I certainly do. Speak to you soon, mate. All right, I'll Thank go and attend walking. my mange for the rest of the weekend. Okay, take care. Do that was Bill there, Bill Walker, regular listener.